Ron Pitts, Tony Baselli, Carissa Thompson here in Jacksonville. We are at halftime, about to start the third quarter. Green Bay up 13 to 7. Let's take a look at the first half numbers. And you can see that the pass yards per play for the Packers is 9.2. Very impressive. Not bad by the Jaguars. They started strong, kind of tailed off at the end. Yeah. Look at the pressure, though. I think that's the biggest. Only one quarterback sack given up by the Packers. But, Ron, how about this? Green Bay only has one pressure on David Garrard. Jacksonville only three on Aaron Rodgers. And a half of football at this level, that means both defensive lines are doing nothing. The coordinators might want to start blitzing to try to affect those numbers. So Jacksonville kicks it away. This is Blackman. He had a 99-yarder for a touchdown last week. That was called back. Doesn't quite get out to the 20-yard line. Ron Pitts, Tony Baselli, and Tony, let's talk about what happened there in that last series for Jacksonville. They started out hot and then seemed to shut it down. Yeah, we talked about the open that the pass game was inept. That's what Jack Del Rio said. Well, they came out and proved them wrong. They looked good. But at the end, really never got in a rhythm. And I didn't like the play calling after they used timeouts to get the ball back. They have a screen. We talked about there's no pass rush. You can't run a screen if the other team's not rushing the passer. Mm -hmm. And then an inside draw. Not no real rhythm, nothing going in the passing game after the sec in the second quarter. Rodgers looking deep. Should have been intercepted in and out of the hands of Brian Williams, intended for Greg Jennings. Let's go down to Carissa Thompson. Well, guys, catching up with both coaches at halftime for Coach Del Rio, as you might imagine, it's all about getting pressure on Aaron Rodgers. He said he liked the game plan that they had headed in. They've just done a poor job of executing it. Offensively, they have to be more aggressive. For Coach McCarthy, on the other hand, you guys, he was so adamant about a communication breakdown. We saw that right before the half with Finley. He said a headset actually broke. It's all about communication on the Packers' side. All right, Carissa, thank you very much. Second and ten after the almost interception. They go back to the ground game and go back to Ryan Grant. A pickup of five. And you talk about what uh, Chris had talked about, Jack Del Rio. Liking the game plan, they didn't execute it. Well, if that's the case, you need to get a new game plan. Because, and, and, but he had one thing right. You need to pressure the quarterback, and they're not doing it. You know, Greg Williams, the defensive coordinator, is known for blitzing and everything else. He's changed a little bit because that's not really how Jack Del Rio likes to play. I think they need to open it up and try to get after him. And I think the only way they can do that, <clears throat> excuse me, is with the blitz. Third down and five. Driver in motion. They'll just set up on the other side. Plenty of time for Rodgers. Driver across the middle of the field. And a Packer first down. Brian Williams on the coverage, not much of a coverage. And if I'm Driver, I'm smiling too. Well, that's what happens. You know, Donald Driver started on the other side of the field and runs a drag route. And if you're the corner, Brian Williams, you only can chase him for so long. He's going to run away from you. No pressure. Look at how Aaron Rodgers can look around, take his time, and then you can see the separation. Tough. They're putting their corners and their, their secondary in a tough spot with a lack of pressure. And that's on both teams. Both teams are doing the same thing in that area. Rodgers continues to be absurd on third down. Now eight for eight on third down. He's already got a touchdown in a third down situation. He'll take off and run it now and gets just across the 40-yard line, clipped at the last second there by Daryl Smith. Will you talk how absurd his third down numbers are? Ron, it's like seven on seven out there. <laughs> you, I mean, and what that is for the viewer, a seven on seven is when you have no offense and defensive line. It's just pass, Kelly. You work on your routes and everything. And usually, the offense does a much better job because there's no rush. Right. And so as you play corner, you know, Brian had to hate that draw. You're running around chasing guys. There's no rush. And you say, oh, it'll be different in the game. Well, today, it's not different. It is seven on seven right now for Aaron Rodgers with all the time he has. Pickup of six, second and four. The handoff to Grant and a quick tackle in the backfield there by Clint Ingram. That's a loss of four. Clint Ingram right here. They bring him up. On the line of scrimmage, it's a run blitz. And he does a good job of just, you know, readjusting, knowing not, that it's not passed. Got, got on a new path and got the tackle for a loss. But now if you're the Jags, bad news, third down. You have yet to stop Aaron Rodgers in this area from completing the ball. Third down and eight. Five-man push, can't get there, does it the last second, and there's a sack on Rodgers. 
Quinton Groves. That's the second round pick out of Auburn. Now with two and a half sacks on the season. Now he went in on a little dance and a little celebration board. He needs to do after getting that sack, run down and chase every one of the secondary guys because Aaron Rodgers sat back there all day again. Yeah. But look at the coverage, nowhere to go. Great job that time by the Jaguars secondary. Big third down, getting the stop. I always laughed when those D linemen would make, would celebrate after a play like that. It was a covered sack. Should, those guys in the back end should celebrate. Jeremy Capanos just brought in last week. Punts it away. Fair catch called by Witherspoon. 13-7 Green Bay. Ron Pitts, Tony Baselli, Chris Thompson back here in Jacksonville. Tony, your son came in the booth at halftime and gave me some very very uh, useful insight on the Jaguars. He said they play a lot better in the first half than they do the second half. And I just looked at him like, thanks. Well, he, still, go, he wrote it down. He goes every home game and he, he's, they're <laughs> sitting in the back still and he just yelled at me. He said, hey, Dad, let him know that Green Bay's better on third down than the Jaguars. And that's a big difference in the game right now. And I said, hey, maybe you should come up here and do this job. He, you're his favorite. You host one of his favorite TV yeah. shows. He loves you. Hey, he likes you better than me. I'll take all the love I can get. First and ten. Play action. Gerard falls down, lets it go anyway. And that probably was a good play considering what happened in the backfield. Moran, if he's in the if he's in the pocket, they might talk about yeah. intentional grounding. Now there's a man in the area. There was a man right. in the area. You're right. That's a gray area. And that's just yep. something that you have to pay attention to. Now he's fortunate he had his his thoughts about him, where he could look around and find just to get it in the area of somebody. Yeah. But you just can't, even if you fall down and you're in the pocket, you just can't throw it away wherever you want. You have to make sure there's somebody in the area. Hey, all right. Second down and 10. Campman, long throw, looking for Northcutt, and he's got him. And it's a clean catch. Tremont Williams on the coverage. Talking about Aaron Campbell almost getting there. He's working against Tony Pashos. Pashos getting that last little shove just to push him by. Good job. And then Dennis Northcutt yes. running by Jamon Williams. And that's one of the first times the Jaguars have gone deep all year. We talked about it early. I think they're more explosive now with Dennis Northcutt in there and Mike Walker and Reggie Williams than they were with Jerry Porter and Matt Jones. You see Tremont Williams take that last little peek back at the quarterback, and that cost him. Inside pressure, Chiller can't make the sack. And a nice job, secondary. Charles Woodson finally chases him down from the strong safety spot. Ron, you talked about the blitz. Brandon Chiller's right here, and him and A.J. Hawk are going to be on an X stunt. Brandon Chiller does a good job of getting there but can't finish. You can see the strength of David Garrard as he shakes away from the tackle. But at this point, he needs to be a little bit more aware where he is. No reason to take a loss of yardage there. Either throw it out of bounds, and he had Maurice Jones-Drew right there in front of him where he could have dumped it. Quick throw outside, wide open. Another shot to the tight end. That's Greg Estandia. It looks as though Estandia has a first down, but there is a penalty flag down as well. Personal foul, clipping, offense, number 62, 15-yard penalty, replay, second out. That's the right guard, Dennis Norman. That wipes out a nice game. Yeah, another, another costly penalty after a good play, something the Jaguars have had quite a bit. Watch the left of the screen, and yeah, clearly, that's a Ooh. clip. I mean, that's on the back of his knees, and, and it's low at the same. I mean, obviously, it's low. It's on the back of his knees, and you just can't make that block. I mean, that's a that's an unsafe play. I mean, that's how guys get hurt. That block thrown on the linebacker, Brady Papinga. Look at Gerard. And a lot of those numbers have come right, in the right, second right. half. Now it's just impossible down in distance. At least for the Jaguars' offense this year. Second and 21. That one's a skipper. That'll bring up third down, intended for Reggie Williams. And that's the first time today we've seen David Gerard miss somebody open. For the most part, he's been pretty accurate today. He one-hopped it there, never really set his feet in the pocket. 
and made, you know, that's a pretty easy throw that he needs to make. So that'll bring up a third down now for Garrard and the Jaguars. Garrard started off hot, and that was a, a nice changeup from the way the season has gone. They misfired on their opening series the last three games, but today they got it going. A long drive, and they started off with a quick seven points. Safety blitz, there's Woodson. Garrard avoids, up, up, now no one to throw the ball to. A late check down, and that'll bring up fourth down well short of the first down as he gets to Maurice Jones-Drew. But nice pressure there on the outside blitz, safety blitz by Charles Woodson. Yeah, Charles Woodson's right here behind Brandon Chiller, and they're going to bring both guys off the corner. Maurice Jones-Drew does the right thing. You pick up the inside blitzer, always leaving Charles Woodson free. And at that point, now, now the hard work for Charles Woodson. You've got David Gard in the open field, tough guy to bring down. Packers had a punt faked on him last week. There's a collision as Blackman lets it roll into the end zone. He knocked the man off that was trying to go get the ball to touch it down. And it'll be Green Bay ball when we come back. Jacksonville, they went up 7-0 early in the first quarter. Then Green Bay, three unanswered scores. And it's been like that ever since. Packer ball on the 20-yard line. Screen. Meyer's not going to be able to hold on, trying to catch up to Ryan Grant, but Grant just a little bit too fast, and that's a Packer first down. A he quick look at the game within the game. Yeah, every week we try to look at a, a matchup inside that is going to play big and determine this game. Today we're looking at Derek Harvey going against Chad Clifflin mainly. You can see him moving around. You can see the athletic ability he has, why they picked him. But besides that, he's really struggled today. I mean, he has gotten locked down. He has not gotten near the quarterback at all. Not really much of a factor in the run game either. either. Grant trying that right side. Not a lot. Maybe two. And, it, and it's one of the things that I think is frustrating this year for the Jaguars. They traded up to get him. It was one of the things they said they needed is somebody who could rush the passer, affect the quarterback. And they traded up, gave up a lot to get him. He had the long holdout, sits out, finally reports just before the last preseason game, but it's really never been a factor. He's starting to play a little bit better, but today against a good left tackle, he's getting locked up. Second down and eight. They switch it up. They'll give to Brandon Jackson, and Jackson with a nice run. You know, I was talking to Edgar Bennett the Packers running back coach before the game, and he was really high on Brandon Jackson. Yet yeah, Ryan Grant is your starter. He said, but Brandon Jackson is a guy that I want to see get more touches, get more involved in the game. He just makes us stronger, he said. I'm a little surprised that Mike McCarthy hasn't gone to the two-back system a little bit more. It's so popular. You see so many teams doing it now. In Carolina, you see it with, with Stewart and D'Angelo Williams. In Tennessee, you got Chris Johnson, Linda White. I'm surprised they don't do that here. you got the Giants with three guys. Brandon Jacobs out this week. They got a bunch of guys up there. I'm surprised you don't see more of it here in Green Bay with Brandon Jackson. Short yardage. Rodgers goes ahead, calls his own number, and gets it done. I mean, the wear and tear the backs take and how violent and physical, you need two guys. I know here in Jackson, but for a long time, that's what they've done with Fred Taylor and Maurice Jones-Drew. Now, the question is, what happens to Fred Taylor? Will he be back? Because Maurice Jones-Drew is going to be the featured guy. With two guys like a Ryan Grant and a Brandon Jackson, two guys who are good football players, I'd like to see him rotate a little bit more and get the uh, get uh, Jackson on the field. Jackson takes a breather. Grant comes back in. Play action to out, and that's caught. That's Jordy Nelson, and Jordy Nelson, the rookie out of Kansas State, second round pick, is really become somewhat of a hero there in Green Bay. Well, it's someone you said you really like watching film. You like how he caught the ball and how he moved around and, mm -hmm. and thought he, he would be somebody who has a bright future. I mean, I mean, you talk about a team that's loaded at one position. It's wide receiver. I mean, you got Donald Driver and Greg Jennings, great players. You got a guy like James Jones, a, a guy coming in his own. Then they add Jordy Nelson. I mean, a lot of talent at that position. Two touchdowns. Doesn't get a lot of play in time, but he does figure a lot in that third down package. And he's made some big plays. 
The give inside to Grant. He'll be about a yard shy of the first down. Well, they're short. He's shorter. They're shorter now than they were. It was second in the short one. Now it's going to be second in the long one. And you can look at some of the, the leaders for the Packers. I think the guy that stands out, this guy right here, Aaron Rodgers. I mean, what a day right so far he's had. Over 100 yard, uh, 100 quarterback rating again. Now, you'll be curious to see if he gets a positive grade this week. Last week from his quarterback coach, he got a, a minus at, after 104 quarterback rating. But I don't see too many negatives today out of Aaron Rodgers. That came from Tom Clement, his quarterback's coach. In spite of having a huge rating, you don't get the W. Missed a couple things. He gave him the minus. Third and two. Going up top. Had Jennings. Jennings had a step. Maybe Rodgers felt the pressure. Brian Williams on the coverage. Well, Greg Williams, defensive coordinator, realized here's Clint Ingram. He's going to be the one coming off the corner, applying the pressure. He runs right over or right through Brandon Jackson into the back of Aaron Rodgers. And Greg Williams realizing his front four can't get there right now. And you cannot let a guy as good as Aaron Rodgers sit back there. So you bring the house, bring pressure. And a guy was open, but he couldn't get it to him because of the pressure. Capano struggled early in Green Bay last week, got it together later on. A marker is down at about the 50-yard line. Stop the music. We'll stay here and see what's going on. And the penalties have killed Green Bay this year. Really hurt both teams. We saw the both teams, teams are right. the, the worst at getting holding penalties called on them. Green Bay's the worst. Jacksonville. And you know Jack Del Rio's not happy about that. Second worst. During the kick, holding, defense, number 97. Half the distance to the goal line. Green Bay, um, Jacksonville keeps the ball. First down. So Packer fans are like, finally, against the other team. That one going against Jacksonville. They'll back up 13-7, Green Bay. Thirteen unanswered points now for Green Bay. And, Tony, I, I teed you up on that earlier. We're going to talk about it throughout the rest of the game. And Jacksonville needs to get back to what they started doing on that first drive. We haven't seen that since. Well, they can't run the ball, and that's the biggest thing. And they can't run against a, a Packer defense that struggles to stop the run. And now here you go with some of this. Tony Pashos, the right tackle. He moves early. Ball star. Offense, number 79, half the distance to the goal, still first down. We talk about the keys, and I think this is the big one. You ask, why aren't they, why are they struggling? Well, they've never got this run game going. Only 2.8 yards a game. He averages 4.3, and we watched on film the Packers, as I said a second ago, struggle to stop the run. Steve Slayton for the Houston, Tech, uh, Houston Texans rushed for 120 yards, mm -hmm. and there were gaping holes. None of that today for the Jaguars. Backed up after the penalty. Drew, Drew almost broke through that one. And a nice tackle in the hole there by the corner. Tremont Williams, but a good pickup, eight yards. He almost made me eat my words because he almost went all the way. He gets out there. He definitely has the speed. He's going to go off left tackle behind Greg Estandia and Mercedes Lewis. And I think if Estandia kind of peels out and, gets, and seals the outside, there would have been a lot more green grass to go. But... That's really the first time I've seen anything that makes you think they can run the ball. Second and five. Pass. Cut. Lewis. Lewis with his first catch of the day. Let's go out to the studio in Los Angeles for this update. Atlanta and Tampa Bay. Falcons trying to open it up. Matt Ryan hooks up with tight end Jason Rader for what they called a 26-yard touchdown, but on the replay challenge, it was overturned, determined he fumbled in the end zone, so it's a touchback, and Tampa Bay ball still Falcons up by three in the third. Rod and Tony? What do they say, Tony? Good old Southern Fried matchup? Is that Ooh. right? NFC South style. And they're both yeah. right there in the hunt for the playoffs, fighting for that wild card. Carolina leading that division. Third and one. And that's the first down, Jacksonville. No flags down. They'll move the chains. You talk about Stadia. Yeah, you talk about having four tight ends up. Boy, they're working the tight they ends. They are today. working them. I mean, these guys are going to have to get in the cold tub afterwards because they've been going to them all day long. The favorite targets. 
and they're going to challenge the spot. Jacksonville tried to hurry up and get up on the yeah. ball, but Mike McCarthy too too smart for that. A wily old cat threw that red flag out first. Now, McCarthy has challenged once today, and he's won that challenge. If he should challenge this one. The Green Bay, the Green Bay coaching staff is challenging the world on the field of a completed catch. If he wins this one, it's the three for two rule. If you're good on your first two, he'll get an extra one. We'll be back to find out. And Ron, you can see now one knee equals two feet, but watch right here. That ball is going to squirt out and come loose. You have to control it through the catch. Be a pass the ground, as they say. Yeah, that's right. And he never controls it right there. The ball is out. Now the official right here is the one who makes the call, but he's shielded from the back of Greg, Est Greg Estandia, and so he does a good job of acting. But guess who's right there on that sideline? Mike McCarthy. He says, no, 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 not so fast, son. I caught that. He might be able to trick the officials and hide the, you know, hide the ball, but clearly out. And I think another good challenge by Mike McCarthy. After reviewing the play, it is an incomplete pass. The receiver lost control of the football when he went out of bounds. It will be fourth down on the 15-yard line. Green Bay will not be charged a timeout. And that will bring on the punting because unit for Jacksonville. McCarthy sharp today remaining, with his challenges. For another challenge. And I don't know if you could hear it there. Jerome Boger just explained it. Because he's been right on his first two, now Green Bay has been awarded another challenge. Another key drop by the Jacksonville receivers. We saw Dennis Northcutt in the first half, and now Greg Estandi on a big third down. Weatherford. That one nearly blocked, but a huge punt by Weatherford. Blackman gets underneath it, takes it at the 30, looking to dance. Almost broke that one. One man away from a really nice return. Pearson Prelo hustles down for the tackle. Good call, coach. Good call. 